five easy steps to outrun the police. We've all seen the chases on TV. You probably thought you could do it better. Maybe you fantasized about pulling off the perfect heist. I know I have. I think I can do it. I'll even show you how. These are five easy steps for running from cops. I'm definitely gonna be on a list after this comes out. Hello, FBI. Now in this hypothetical situation, we're gonna imagine that you're planning a bank job. Bank robberies are the coolest crime because nobody gets hurt and the money is insured. What could possibly go wrong? Step one, choosing the right car. Everyone has their own idea. If I'm gonna rob a bank, what car am I using as a getaway vehicle? A f Hellcat. A Hellcat that's gonna be going 180 f miles an hour down the god freeway. I'm gassing that mother flying faster than a helicopter. Or you go something that's like really common, right? You got to go a really fast car or you got to go something that's like, you know, that that's blendable, right? That's something that's going to blend in with the crowd. Like a uh, Toyota. Of the perfect heist mobile. But each has a their motorcycle. That's a dumb idea. You're going to rob a bank and then you're going to get away on a motorcycle. Where are you putting all that you're stealing? In a duffel bag? Then what happens if you hit a pebble going 130 miles an hour? You're just going to die. Well, I know there's a lot of people that run from the cops uh, on motorcycles. Um, because there's like a no, isn't there like a no chase rule or something? Like, co like uh, I, a lot of motorcycle riders will pull up their plates, like they'll bend their plate so the cop can't scan it, and then they'll just go like 100 miles an hour past the cop, and they won't chase them. Their own advantages and drawbacks. One thing that might affect your decision is what your adversaries but are driving. But if you rob a bank, they're definitely chasing you. I mean, cop cars used to be big sedans like the Crown Victoria, but that is quickly changing. Most departments are switching to the Ford Explorer Police Interceptor. It's always- Yo, if you drive a- Yo, I'm gonna say this right now. If you drive a Ford Explorer and you're not a cop, you're a dickhead. You're a dickhead because you because you got my heart pounding every time I pass somebody, bro. Every time I pass somebody, I'm going five over. I'm like, oh, fuck. And then it's just some it's just some mom. Driving her white Ford Explorer that could go 140 miles an hour, which she doesn't fucking need. Wheel drive has upgraded brakes and suspension and new models are pushing four hundred horsepower that's zero to 60 in around five and a half seconds oh, let's shit. see with some donut employee bro i feel like most cars couldn't outrun a cop car he's picked oh, that's easy well i'd have my friend drive a white right. ford bronco and then we'd just hit the highway cops yeah. never pull those over jeep track car probably the best choice fiat 500 turbo not the apart because the exhaust is too loud oh, and ever heard of a little thing called the italian job yeah old school porsche 911 gen 2 mazda speed 3 trophy truck 100%. A white BMW. So you can drive like an asshole and you won't stick out. <laughs> Supercars are- Oh, they're trying to get away, like, not suspiciously. Oh, dude, I'm driving like a fucking- I'm driving a Toyota Camry. No, no one's pulling me over in a fucking Toyota Camry. I'm gonna drive a gray Toyota Camry. You're never fucking, you're, you see this car, you're not going to be like, oh, they just robbed a bank. You're going to think this is just some dude that works an office job. Like, yeah, like, like, it's a, it's, you know, it's an everyday man's car, right? It's just a, you know, like a thousand people have this within a fucking two mile radius. Fucking gray Toyota Camry. If I'm trying to be like very, um, low key. This heck and maneuverable and whomst among us doesn't want to outrun a helicopter, but there are a ton of drawbacks. First, supercars have no ground clearance. There's and you're, uh, you know, putting in a lot of investment money into a fucking supercar. Uh, you want to rob a bank. I don't think you got enough money to buy a fucking McLaren. No room for a big bag of cash, and visibility in most of them is trash. And lastly, there's no way you'll blend in. It'll be really easy for witnesses to say that your car looks like a Ferrari. A hat Toyota Camry. No, no. Oh, wait, no, those are quicker, though. Hatchback is another good choice. Practical, low profile, and agile. 
Me personally, the thought of fleeing the cops in a Volkswagen GTI sounds pretty good. I think we can all agree on that, right? Ah, oh, God, all right. Turns out someone already thought of this. Car and Driver Magazine tested how fast your car has to be to outrun the cops. They used a GTI, which held off the cops around turns, but it wasn't fast enough to make any sort of gainful lead. So if you're thinking about going the hatchback route, make sure you're in an area with tight quarters and short straights. As for Pumphrey's trophy truck, you can literally go over anything, but it'll take a minute for your partner to put on the racing harness, unless they're fine with being thrown around the cockpit. What you need is something that splits the difference between supercar and hatchback, something with good performance, practicality, and the ability to stay undercover. Other people will tell you to get something like a 5 Yo, series. I haven't seen Dumb and Dumber in fucking years. BMW or maybe the Chevy SS, which are both great options, and I think you'd be okay. But I say go further. You want to blend in on the streets? I say blend in with the cops. Get a 5th gen Ford Explorer in either black, white, or silver, and you'll look like an unmarked police car. Better yet, just buy a police car. You can get these things for under- I feel like that's a terrible idea. Buy, if you're going to rob a bank and you're going to drive a police car that's not a police car, they're going to be able to find you. A Ford Explorer is probably a better choice. 15 grand, and Bart actually bought this thing. Not only will you level the playing field, but it's pretty comfy too. It's also got a column shifter. Let me know what car you would choose in the comments. I want to see some freaking creativity, guys. Step number two, plan, plan, plan. When you watch a police chase live, it becomes clear that most of these people running don't have a plan. They just drive around a main avenue, take a wrong turn somewhere, usually hit some poor guy in an intersection, then ditch their car outside a laundromat. I would drive like 30 miles to an underpass. I would blow up, my, I would blow up the car to smithereens. And then I would fucking, and then I would, I would have scuba gear. I would have a waterproof bag. I would have a waterproof bag. I would drive my car 30 miles under an underpass and a bridge. I'd blow the shit out of my car. I'm fucking blowing it up. I would have scuba gear and a fucking waterproof bag, and I would swim. Upriver. No, not upriver. That's a bad idea. Downriver. To somewhere. And then I would have somebody pick me up. Hop into someone's backyard and then get tackled by a big dude named Officer Greg. But we ain't doing that. Nah, before you rob that bank, you need to drive all around it at all different times of day so you know when it's better to take side streets and which roads to avoid entirely. Put these on. The Department of Justice recognizes three different types of pursuit policies. A discretionary policy leaves it up to the officer. A restrictive one requires an officer to ask permission from their supervisor to initiate. And discouraging departments only see pursuits as a last resort. That means, depending on where you live, the police might not chase you at all. Or you might live in a state like California where officers are not required by law to follow department policy and are in fact covered by an immunity shield should something go wrong during a chase. Something like this. Damn, he just playing fucking bumper cars with them. So be sure to know your local- I feel like that's the coolest thing about being a cop, though. Going on a chase, you gotta fucking- You just hit that motherfucker, you start flipping and shit. Department's policy ahead of time. To make sure you weren't stopped by a pit maneuver, spike strip, or getting boxed in, I recommend that you spend as little time on the road as possible. The less time you give the police to plan and coordinate, the better. Step three, driving correctly. Let's look at some footy. Here's this dude in a yellow Corvette. Pretty good car. For Don't lie, if I'm robbing a bank, I'm probably gonna rob a bank in like Wyoming. And then I'm just gonna stash the money like somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Right? And then I'm gonna like lay low for like a month. And then I'm gonna fucking slowly get that shit. I feel like robbing a bank in like New York or LA is like the worst idea. For the most part, his like you're gonna get the most money, but you're also just gonna be fucked. And it's to speed away from officers. But for some reason. There's no money though? I mean, yeah. But like if you're saying, oh, there's no money, like a Wyoming bank's gonna have the same amount of money as like a local bank, right? They're gonna have like 50 to 100 grand. 
right? You're putting innocent people and yourself in way too much unnecessary danger. I don't recommend There's it. like no money in the bank. That's what I'm saying. Like if you stole, like if you went to your local bank and you took all of the money they had, they would probably have like a hundred grand, 50 K or less. Large banks might have 200K or more. Central banks will have way more, right? But, like, the like, is that worth it? Robbing a bank for 200K max? Like, you might go in and they might be low on money that day. And they're going to have, like, 40 grand. This chase ends when he inexplicably hesitates, mashes the gas, and spins out, which leaves him open to a nice smash. Wow, they fucking ruined his car, too. Smashing. Go ahead and smash that like button y'all i'll hit you with a like brother huh this guy's mistake was thinking that you can power out of a chase even the news anchors know that's a bad idea like no no safe. just put the suv in front Check of him dude you wreck oh, oh my god this, this is, is embarrassing real... then there's this guy who stole a freaking tank back in 1995 you might think this is the ultimate getaway vehicle, and it kind of is, but not really. There's no way he could have blended into traffic with a freaking tank. A bigger problem was his lack of road knowledge, which came into play when he lodged the tank on some Jersey barriers, which ended the pursuit. Finally, there's this chase. Well, the pursuit would never end because a tank's not going that quick. Like, if you have a tank, they're just, like, they could just follow you. In Phoenix, which seems pretty docile, with the bad guy taking it easy on some main roadways. Things are going smoothly until he hits this intersection. Instead of taking the left with the flow of traffic, he changes his mind and continues going straight. This hesitation gives the two cars behind him enough time to get closer, which is good because there's even cop cars or there's just regular people. Cops. They were in plain sight, just waiting for the perfect time to strike. Unmarked cars are definitely something you're gonna have to look out for. No, they were cops and random cars. One thing cars. you can't look out for, though, is helicopters. But don't worry, I have a plan for those, which I'll tell you in a little bit. Ready? Step four, do the unexpected. You think anybody watched this video and then robbed a bank? It has four million views. If you want to get away from the police, you got to throw a wrench in the gears. Police have protocol for pretty much everything. Everything they're expecting, that is. Last year in LA, this chase ended when the driver went into an active Metro Line tunnel where the police did not follow because it was just too dangerous. The driver and his girl hid in an evacuation room where he was apprehended, but she got away. The lady got away because the LAPD didn't have protocol for someone driving into Metro tunnels but I'll bet you anything that they do now. Do the unexpected. Something like choosing a bank near an airport, maybe. Not to get away on a plane, but to keep those pesky police helicopters at bay. Air traffic controllers have complete authority over who is in their airspace. If the police want to fly near an airport, they need to ask for permission. Plus, you need to be at the airport anyway, because you'd have a second car waiting for you in the parking garage. <laughs> so a little review before we get to the final step. Step one, choose the right car, know what you're up against. Step two, plan. I feel like you're still not getting away. They have cameras, right? Like you switch cars. They're just going to see you drive away in another car. Plan, plan. Step three, drive good. And step four, do the unexpected. Now, if you follow those four steps correctly and you make a clean break. They didn't inspect every car that goes out. That's what I'm saying. Or, or. It's just like, even if it's like a few days, like, you know how many people have cameras, like at the side, so like traffic stops and like all this other shit, like they'll just see where you went. It'll take them a month, but they'll find you. Step number five is learning how to order a margarita in Espanol, compadre. Dos margaritas, por favor. No, you, gotta, you gotta roll your R's. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to encourage you to do stuff. Don't do it, don't rob a bank. 60% of bank robberies get solved in the first 24 hours, so wow. don't do it. You'll get caught. Follow me on Instagram at Nolan. The other 40% probably get solved in like a month. It's like so rare in 2023 to be able to rob a bank and get away with it. Most of the 40% of bank robberies that aren't solved within the 24 hours don't get solved at all. That's just so, I feel like that's so untrue. Those that do, it's usually because the robbers are caught uh, robbing a different bank at a later date. And then they connect it to the unsolved robbery. Yeah. I feel like maybe that. 
But I feel like the 40% of the robberies that aren't solved in 24 hours, at least, like, thir like only 10% of, of the... Only 10% of robberies probably end in people getting away for more than a month, right? Just because I like maybe like 5% get away forever, but even then, it's like, how are you getting away with that shit? Like, you have to have that so meticulously planned. <laughs> Thank you.